بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off and um, where the Sheikh was discussing um, the first nullifier of Islam and that is shirk and the Sheikh he was explaining uh, the meaning of shirk and why it's a nullifier and, and the Sheikh who explains the book he <coughs> mentions that within this lesson or within these few pages that we're going to read mentions also uh, the reason why shirk was mentioned first in the book. So then the shirk, he continues, he says, وَهَذِهِ الْتَرِيقَةُ أَيْذًا مَوْجُودَةٌ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ قُلْ تَعَالُوا أَتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ بَدْعَ بِمَاذَا أَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا بَدْعَ بِالْإِشْرَاكِ في سورة الإسراء لما عدده وذكر سبحانه وتعالى جملة من الأوامر والنواهي تقرب من الثمانية الثمانية عشر أمرا ونهيا بدأها بقوله لا تجعل من الله إلها آخر فتكعود مذموما مخذولا وختمها بقوله ولا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر وأيضا في الآيات التي فيها جملة من الأوامر تبدأ بالأمر بالتوحيد وتبدأ بالنهي عن الشرك واعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا وبالوالدين إحسانا بل إن أول أمر في القرآن أمر, أمر بالتوحيد وأول نهي, وأول نهي في القرآن نهي عن الشرك إذا فتحت المصحف وبدأت تقرأ أول أمر أول أمر تراه في القرآن أمر بالتوحيد. So we'll just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh says, continues and he says that from where he left off in the previous paragraph, he says that we find we find this way or method present in the book of Allah Jalla wa Ala. and then he mentions an ayah. Um, and mentions here and he says why and we see that in the first ayah that's mentioned <coughs> when Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to call the Jews and the Christians and to come and discuss and not to not to uh, uh, commit shirk with Allah not to you know create partners in worship alongside Allah the Sheikh uh, the says that it began with what? It's shirk Shirk and also in Surah Al Isra, uh, after approximately 18 um, commands and prohibitions that Allah mentions, after straight after that, Allah mentions uh, this ayah or in the ayah 22 where Allah says, لا تجعل ما الله إله آخر فتكعود مذموم مخذولا. If we go to the translation of that, we'll see that also. He follows a, a similar pattern that set not up with Allah any other God. Oh man, this verse is addressed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but its implication is general to all mankind. And then where it says, "Oh, you will sit down, reproved, forsaken." So set not up with Allah any other God, or oh, man, or oh, people, uh, or you will sit down. Reproved and forsaken in the hellfire. So you can see that uh, the pattern, and then the Sheikh continues. He says that Allah um, finishes those ayahs uh, in the same um, in the same surah on verse uh, thirty nine, 
another god alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Shaykh continues and says, and also uh, in in these ayat uh, where we see uh, the ayats which consist of uh, commands, uh, they always begin with a tawheed, commanding with tawheed. Allah commands us with tawheed. And they also, uh, they also you'll see ayahs that begin with prohibitions, uh, the prohibition of shirk. And so then the Shaykh, he mentions an ayah that we already read, it's Surah Nisa, verse 36. وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and do not uh, associate partners in worship with Him. Do not associate anything in, uh, with Him in worship. And do good to parents. Be good to parents and do good to parents. So then the Shaykh continues and he says that he also mentions extra benefits here and he says to us that the first command in the Quran is the command of Tawheed and the first prohibition is a prohibition of shirk within the Quran. So the Shaykh says if, if, you, if, we open, if you opened uh, uh, the copy of the Quran uh, and you, you, and, and you, and you um, read the first you read the first command you'd see that in the quran that command would be a tawheed and if you read the quran and you came across the first prohibition then that prohibition you would see it is shirk pro prohibiting you from shirk or laying down the prohibition of shirk and and then the shaykh continues says if you call the subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya ayyuhan nas u'budu rabbakum Ya ayyuhan nas u'budu rabbakum Ay wahaduhu qala ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma Kullu amrin bil ibadati Fil qur'ani amrun bil tawheed Ya ayyuhan nas u'budu rabbakum Alladhi khalakakum Walladhina min qablikum Lallakum tatakun الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون هذا أول نهي أول نهي في القرآن فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون أول شيء نهي عنه في القرآن الشرك لا تجعلوا لله أندادا a shuraka. So then the Shaykh he says here that as he mentions an ayah following on from where we left off, the Shaykh he goes ahead and he says and he mentions this ayah, Ya Ayuhana so Budu Rabakum, O people, worship your Lord. And that's from Surah to Bakra verse twenty one. And the Shaykh says, meaning that worship your Lord only. Don't associate any partners with him. And the Shaykh, he says that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said that every command with regard to worship in the Quran, it's the command of Tawheed. It's the command of Tawheed. It's com uh, we've been commanded with Tawheed Allah. And then the Shaykh mentions uh, the full ayah from verse 21 to 22. And so if we look at um, the meaning of that then so just give me a moment so verse 21 to 22 if we look at the meanings O mankind worship your lord allah who created you and those who were before you so that you may become al muttaqun the pious who has made the earth a resting place for you and the sky as a canopy and sent down water rain from the sky and brought forth therewith fruits as a provision for you then do not set up rivals unto Allah in worship while you know that he alone has the right to be worshipped. And that's, alhamdulillah, that's very clear. Very clear in that regard. It helps us understand the lesson. So then the shaykh, he continues, he says, so this is the first prohibition within the Quran and that you don't set up rivals with Allah, don't set up partners with Allah. And as we already know that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
yeah, that's responsible for all the mentioned in the ayah there. And it doesn't make any sense that you would turn away or share any of your worship with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh Gun say that the first thing that we've been prohibited from in the Quran is shirk, is associating partners of worship with Allah. And and the Shaykh says, Shuraka in Arabic, and just saying like partners. Any kind of partner you're sharing and um, sharing your worship. And the Shaykh says, Well, Yahada Bada al Musanif Rahimahullah Ta'ala bihad al Naqid a shirku billahi le nahu akhtaruha wa a'zamuha. So then the Shaykh says, And this is why the original author, a Shaykh al Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah, began and started with the first nullifier of Islam and chose it to be shirk because it is the most dangerous and the most greatest and most dangerous uh, thing that you can fall into. As and we know from previous books I've studied and some of us have studied before <coughs> that whoever commits shirk of this type leaves the fold of Islam. That's why it's such a big deal to know about it and to avoid it. So then the Shaykh he continues here and he says, "Qala a shirku fi ibadatillah wa shirku fi asli ma'nahu wa asli mudlulihi at taswiya wa shirku billahi taswiya tu ghairillahi billahi fi shayin min khasaisihi aw shayin min hukukihi faman sawa ghairallahu billah." غير الله بالله في شيء من خصائص الله أو شيء من حقوق الله سبحانه وتعالى على عبادي فقد أشرك بالله العظيم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في بيان حال الكفار حال الكفار أهل النار عندما يدخلون نار جهنم يوم القيامة أنهم يقولون سدن لا تستوب يا سدن الشيخ he mentions here very important a very important point just to understand the meaning of shirk and uh, this is we all should uh, have a uh, a complete understanding of, of of what what that means and the sheikh explains it here very well alhamdulillah so he says that the original author mentions that a shirk fi ibadatillah that shirk in the worship of allah right so you know sharing your worship with other than allah and then the sheikh says, says that shirk in its foundational meaning, the base, the basic meaning, and uh, he says that the basic meaning and from its roots of what shirk actually means, he says that it's it's making something equal, it's equality, equality, and we'll understand what that means in a second. So the sheikh he says, so shirk with Allah, associating partners of worship with Allah. It is making uh, something other than Allah equal with Allah. So something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making that thing equal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a thing that's specific to Allah jalla wa ala, or a thing uh, or, 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 or from Allah's rights. So basically uh, giving other than Allah the same status from those things that which are specific to Allah only or that are from Allah's rights only. So basically, they're giving something else the same level or bringing something else to the level of Allah Jalla wa ala, in something that's specific to Allah or that's something from His rights. Jalla wa ala, yeah? So this is what the Sheikh says here. And so it's equalizing or bringing up that status of something that is not deserved of it to the same level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, so, from the specifics of Allah jalla wa ala, from something that's specific to him or from his rights that are his. And this is what, it, what the general meaning of shirk is. And so if anybody does that, then he has associated uh, something else in worship with Allah. So, so basically, he's committed shirk. 
And then the Shaykh says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, has clarified the condition of the kuffar uh, of the hellfire. You know, when they, ent- when they are entered into the hellfire on Yawm al Qiyamah, and they will say, they'll say this, they'll say, Tallahi in, in kunna lafi dalalim mubeen idh nusawikum bi rabbil alameen. And this will be clear now when we read from the, the meaning of this ayah. Let's go to the meaning of the ayah and we'll see. So this is from Surah to Shu'ara. Give me one second. Uh, 97 and 98. By Allah, we were truly in a manifest error when we held you false gods as equals in worship with the Lord of the Alameen, mankind, jinns, and all that exists. So that helps and completes our understanding there. And this about bringing something else equal to Allah. Jalla wa ala. <coughs> <coughs> so then the Shaykh continues and he says. انظر ماذا يصف أهل النار عملهم ذلال مبين أي واضح وبين ذلال ذلال بين ذلا ذلاله وواضح في منتهى الظلال ما هو إذ نسويكم برب العالمين أي نسويكم بالله في خصائصه وحقوقه يقولون ذلك على سبيل الندم والأسف ولكن لا يفيد ولا ينفع بل إنهم في خدم هذا الندم والأسف يتوجهون إلى الله بالنداء وطلب أن يؤيدهم إلى الدنيا ليعملوا ليعملوا الصالحات وليحققوا التوحيد وليبتعدوا عن الشرك <coughs> والله سبحانه وتعالى يقول So let's just stop there for a second and So the Sheikh continues and, and he says that what does this ayah that we read tell us or inform us of? The Sheikh says that it informs us of those disbelievers, the mushrikeen, when they committed shirk with Allah, that that they knew that they were in manifest error, as I mentioned in the ayah, and that they were upon clear uh, misguidance, and that they were, you know, they were upon misguidance, and when they said, when they said that. We made, we raised our gods equal to the Lord of all the worlds. They knew and they know uh, that they've, uh, that they manifest error when they've committed shirk with Allah Jalla wa'ala, when they know that Allah is the one who provides for them, who takes care of affairs of the, the dunya uh, and on, on all those kinds of things. Uh, then they obviously shared their worship with something that has no power and no might and cannot do anything. And so then they say that, and they say, uh, because, you know, in in a state of sadness and regret. And that when they say this, they won't, it's going to be on the yom, it's going to be on the day of judgment. It's not going to benefit them because the deeds have been done now. And that's it. And they've been taken to account and their destination is a hellfire. And that what they say there is not, it's not going to benefit them or help them in any way. And and then the Sheikh says that they, they just say that um out of in a state of regret and sadness and um they'll request from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be returned to the dunya so that they can work righteous deeds, i.e. you know, Tawheed and all the other good deeds and um uh, and that they could actualize Tawheed and live upon uh, the way of Tawheed and worshipping Allah alone. Uh, and stay far away from shirk but Allah will say the, the following to them so the shaykh says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walladhina kafaru lahum naru jahannama la yuqda alayhim fayamutu wa la yukhafafu anhum min adhabiha kathadika najazi kulla kafur wa hum yastarikhuna fiha madha yuridun rabbana أخرجنا نعمل صالحا غير الذي كنا نعمل غير الشرك الذي كنا نعمله أعرف أن الشرك هو ضلال مبين. So then uh, the Sheikh mentions this ayah and he, and he says that uh, where Allah says that those who have disbelieved for them is the hellfire. Nor will they completely die uh, 
and they will taste and nor will the um, punishment be lightened uh, and you know they will taste the punishment and that is the recompense or reward or recompense of every disbeliever and you know they just they and if you go to verse 36 if you go back <coughs> to this um ah yeah give me one second And then the uh, from uh, Ayah 37, the, the first part, Therein they will cry, Our Lord bring us out, we shall do righteous good deeds, not the evil deeds that we used to do. So this is what they're going to say, but they will never come out. Because, as we'll see, as we go through the lesson, inshallah. Let's keep going. Yeah, so they'll say, Oh, Rabbi Nakhrijna, please take us out. We will work righteous deeds, uh, other than what we used to do. And then the shaykh says, uh, meaning that uh, they, they're saying that they won't do shirk that they used to do. And the shaykh says that, says, Arafu anna shirka huwa dhalal mubin, that they know, they, they'll know then that shirk, uh, or they knew that, they'll know that shirk is uh, a manifest error. Error and misguidance, clear misguidance. And then she says, "Wa anna al-amal al-salih la yakunu illa bi tawhid Rabbil Alamin, Rabbil Alamin." And that we know that the Sheikh says here that that they know as well, and as we know as well, that deeds, righteous deeds, aren't done except upon tawhid. That righteous deeds, the basis of all righteous deeds, is that they're upon tawhid, tawhid. That we do it for Allah's sake alone. That it's only Allah that we are working for and that we seek, seeking Allah's face you know that's always our it should be our intention and it's clear it's a class for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just for him yeah and that's the basis so then um, the shaykh continues and he mentions the ayah that we already, already read where the uh, disbelievers the kuffar when they're thrown into the hellfire for what they used to do they, 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 they request from Allah they cry and requesting to be taken out, saying, please take us out and we will work righteous deeds, i.e. upon Tawheed, uh, other than what we used to do in the dunya. The reason for them going to the Alpha in the first place. <coughs> so then the Shaykh, he continues, says, Wa madhi al jawab. And the Shaykh says, what will be the answer to their question or their plea? And he mentions the ayah here, the part of the ayah of the Shaykh, where he says here, where Allah Jalla wa says, Awalam nu'amirkum, hey alam nu'tikum mahalatan zamaniya umuran fil hayati dunya. Awalam nu'amirkum ma yitadhakkaru fihi min man tadhakkara wa ja'akum un nadheer fadhuqu fama li dhalimina min nasir. So then the Shaykh, he says that, uh, Allah replies, he says, Awalam nu'amirkum. Didn't we give you enough time? Didn't we give you enough time in the dunya? Didn't you have enough of a lifespan to be able to work good and do the right things in the dunya? Didn't you have enough time then? This is what's being said to them. And then the whole ayah here where the Shaykh mentions from Surah to Fatir. So if we go there, Surah to Fatir, verse 36 to 37. So let me just find that section there. Give me one second. Ah, here we go. Did we not give you lives long enough so that whosoever would receive admonition could receive it? And the warner came to you, so taste you the evil of your deeds. So that's part of the ayah that the Sheikh has quoted to us. And the Sheikh says, Wal muradu bidhalimeen ayya al mushrikeen al kafirin fa mali dhalimeena min nasir fa yukhalladuna fiha abadan abad. Um, uh, Let's go back to the ayah for a second. Sorry. And towards the end of the ayah, so taste you the evil of your deeds for the Dali moon, polytheists and wrongdoers, etc. There is no helper. That's a bit I missed off. Sorry. So the Sheikh says that the, the purpose or the point here uh, of uh, the word Dali moon is uh, it's to do with it's it's referring to the the disbel the uh, polytheists and disbelievers 
the polytheistic disbelievers. Uh, and then the Sheikh says, So that these people will be in the hellfire forever and ever. They'll be there for eternity. Then the Sheikh mentions an ayah again that we read earlier on. La yukda alayhim fayamutu wa la yukhaffaf wanhum min adhabiha. And that uh, they will be in the hellfire and they will, Allah will not allow them to die completely. And uh, they won't die completely and the torment won't be lightened. And they will taste that punishment, that torment, and it will continue forever. And the Shaykh says, Allah Dabu La Yukhaf Bal Yazid Kamafi Surat in Naba. And then the Shaykh mentions here that he says that the torment won't be lightened, but it's going to increase. Every time it'll just increase and increase and increase, and they'll feel that increase. There won't there's no limit. It'll just keep increasing, 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 and increasing, and it will never stop increasing. And the Shaykh says, as mentioned also in Surah Tun Naba. فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا So, you know, so taste, you know, taste the punishment, the torment. And <coughs> the torment will be increased. That you won't taste except an increase in that torment. It will keep increasing. So then the Shaykh, he continues and he says to us, he says, فَشِرْكُوا هُوَ تَسْوِيَةُ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِاللَّهِ بإطاء غير الله عز وجل شيئا من خصائص الرب أو شيئا من حقوق الرب على الإباد خصائص الرب جل وعلا مثل الخلق والرزق والتصرف والتدبير والهداية والظلال ودخول الجنة ونجاة من النار وإحاطة علمه وشمول رحمته وسعت وسعت منه أمنه وفضله وعطائه وكونه يكشف يكشف الكروبات ويفرج الهموم ويشفي السقيم ويجيب المضطرين. So then the Sheikh mentions in Pompa, which we already mentioned earlier on. So whoever missed that bit will get to hear it now. The Sheikh he says, so shirk it is making other than Allah. Equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In that which is specific to Allah jalla wa ala Or from Allah's rights That's what shirk means Right in the basic meaning So it could be anything It could be raising a human An angel A water bottle A stone A living thing A non-living thing when you raise whatever it is which is other than Allah to the same status uh, of Allah with regards to those things which are specific to Allah or that those things which are from the rights of Allah, then that is shirk. That's when you've committed shirk. And the Shaykh, he says here that he gives us some examples. He says, for example, some things that are specific to Allah. For example, he's the provider. He's the one who provides. Right? He is the one who creates. He is the one who deals with the affairs of the universe and takes care and disposes of the affairs of the universe. He is the one who guides and he is the one who also misguides because of a defect in the people's hearts, a disease in the people's hearts. He is the one who enters people into Jannah and he is the one who saves people from the hellfire. He is the one whose knowledge encompasses everything and his mercy is expansive and vast. Yeah? And he, he has, and his, uh, uh, um, you know, blessings and, you know, what Allah gives from his blessings, you know, are far wide and reaching. And the nature of, uh, 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 the nature of the situations where Allah takes people out of their hardships and releases them from their hardships and their difficult times. And he cures the sick and he answers the one under the arrest. So these are some of the things that are specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. If we start asking someone else, oh, please, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, he asks something. From to someone else other than Allah, any of these sort of things, for example, then we've committed shirk. We've committed shirk automatically.
you know, Shirk Akbar. He'll take us out of the fold of Islam. And like in previous books that we've read, our, all our deeds, bank balance of good deeds, will be just erased, completely erased to zero. So that's uh, how we should understand uh, this as the Sheikh has mentioned it to us. Then the Sheikh mentions an ayah to us. He says to us, in support of what he said, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ فَأَيْلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ So then, in Surah Al-Naml, verse 62, if we go there, we'll see now, well, this is helping complete our understanding with some evidence from the Qur'an. Surah Al-Naml, verse 62. Is not he better than your gods who responds to the distressed one? When he calls him and who removes the evil and makes you inheritors of the earth, generations after generations, is there any God with Allah? Little is that you remember. So that that's clear for us. That that helps us and completes our understanding of what the Sheikh mentioned. So the Sheikh continues and he says to us, "Ay qalilun tadakkarukum wa aqlukum wa fahmukum." أو تذكركم وأقلكم وفهمكم وإلا لو أقل الإنسان وأحسن التذكر والفهم لما لما عدل عن التوحيد ولم يمل عنه لكن الميل للشرك والكفر بسبب عتب عقل الإنسان وفساده قليلا ما تذكرون فمن أعطى غير الله سبحانه وتعالى شيئا من هذه الخصائص اعتقد في مخلوق حيا كان أو ميتا أو جمادا شيئا من هذه الخصائص كفر بالله وكان من المشركين أهل نار جهنم المخلدين فيها أبد الآباد So then the Sheikh he says i.e. what does that mean then what we read from the eye of the Quran he says i.e. that is little that we remember or that we reminded of and that we encompass in our intelligence and understanding, uh, in understanding that, <coughs> except that if a person, uh, you know, was able to understand it and able to remember and understand, then when you know the 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 the, the person wouldn't, you know, veer away from uh, the tawheed of Allah. But the Sheikh says that this veering away to shirk uh, and disbelief is because of the person's um, intelligence when it's become corrupted. When their thoughts and their mind has been corrupted, then they veer away from Tawheed and they go towards committing shirk and acts of shirk. So it's important for us to understand that. So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say, so whoever gives other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a thing which is from that which is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he believes in one of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether he be alive or dead or uh, uh, non-living, for example, like a stone um, uh, or any other kind of item or thing that exists that's created, uh, um, then he commits shirk with Allah and disbelief with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned earlier on as well and then he and this person will be from the disbelievers and will be from the people of the hellfire and if he dies upon that it will be from the people of the hellfire and will be in the hellfire for eternity forever and ever so we've got the last paragraph inshallah and we'll stop uh, here today uh, inshallah so uh, I'll, I'll i'll wrap up uh, what's to come inshallah uh, at the end of the lesson in about five minutes so then the sheikh he goes on to say وَكَذَلِكَ مَنَعَتَ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا مِنْ حُقُوقِ لَا يَلَى الْلِبَادِ قَالَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ يَا مُعَادُ أَتَدْرِي مَا حَقُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْلِبَادِ وَمَا حَقُ الْلِبَادِ عَلَى اللَّهِ قُلْتُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمْ قَالَ حق الله على الإباد أن يعبدوه ولا يشركوا به شيئا وحق الإباد على الله أن لا يعذب من لا يشرك به شيئا So then the Shaykh comes and he mentions to us the hadith of Muad is a famous hadith well known one 
uh, and if we're not uh, acquainted with it, we'll be, we'll be acquainted with it now. It's a well-known famous hadith. And the Shaykh, he brings it and he says to us, that he says, and like that, whoever gives other than Allah a thing from the rights of Allah Jalla wa'ala as well, so not just the things that are specific to Allah, but also from the rights of Allah as well, that he gives the rights of uh, those things that are the rights of Allah to the servants or to the creatures of Allah, the creation, then the Prophet Sallallahu said this, and this is the hadith here, so which we just read now in the green highlight text. The Prophet Sallallahu said to Muadh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, said to him, Ya Muadh, he says, Ya Muadh, do you know uh, what the right of Allah is upon his slave and what the right of the slaves are upon Allah? So then Muadh radiallahu anhu, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Allah and his messenger know better. And he said, in reply, the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, he said that the, that the uh, right of Allah upon his slaves is that they worship him and they do not associate any partners with him in worship. And the rights of the the right of the slave upon Allah Jalla wa'ala is that he will not punish them as long as they do not commit shirk with him. See, so the importance, and this shows us the importance of Tawheed, that we need to understand what Tawheed is, and we need to understand its opposite, which is shirk. And so in order for what? In order to be far away from falling into shirk and avoid its traps and pitfalls, and so that we can worship Allah 100%, upon Tawheed, singling him out in all forms of worship and not associating any partners, not sharing anything that was, which is specific to Allah or that which is from his rights with anything else. Yeah. So then the Shaykh goes on to say to us, فَالْإِبَادَةُ حَقٌّ لِلَّهِ عَلَى عِبَادِهِ الْإِبَادَةُ مِنْ من صلاة وصيام وذبح ونظر ورقوء وسجود وخوف ورجاء وتوكل واستعانة واستغاثة وغير ذلك الإبادة حق حق لله فمن أعطى هذا الحق أو شيئا منه لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى فإنه يكون بذلك مشركا بالله العظيم منتقلا من ملة الإسلام فالشرك بالله هو تسوية غير الله بالله في شيء من حقوق الله عز وجل أو شيء من خصائصه تبارك وتعالى التي تفرد بها كما سبق إيضاح ذلك وبيانه. So then the Sheikh he says, so that that worship, so worship, uh, it's a right, it's a right of Allah upon his slaves, and worship <coughs> is from, for example, Sheikh gives us some examples like you know your five daily prayers, praying, you know praying, uh, fasting. Uh, slaughtering in the name of Allah, um, uh, making vows, yeah, in the name of Allah, vows, bowing, you know, prostrating, fear, hope, trust, assistance, seeking assistance, and seeking aid. And other than that, from the types of worship that are from the rights of Allah, so whoever gives this right or a thing from it to other than Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed he is he's in he is a mushrik he is a polytheist and has committed polytheism with Allah Jalla wa he's, he shared his worship with Allah Jalla wa and therefore because of that he has left the fold of Islam so the shaykh says a shirku billah associating partners in worship with Allah it is making other than Allah uh, to the same level of, uh, of Allah Jalla wa'ala. So bringing something uh, that's other than Allah to the same level of Allah in a thing which is from the rights of Allah or from the things that are specific to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Yeah. And so this is what the Shaykh says that is explained with regards to the original author's uh, work here in this lesson uh, and on these two, three pages that we've read. 
and he says that it's clarified the meaning of that. So then, um, what's to come here is in the red. <coughs> so, <coughs> briefly mentioning this, um, the Sheikh says, Qala rahimahullah ta'ala ashirku fi ibadatillah. So, I won't read the whole thing, but I'll just mention what it is. You can see the two bullet points just below. So, the Sheikh is going to explain further uh, about shirk. How do we uh, learn and understand what shirk is? And knowing its uh, reality and its facts of what shirk is. And then the second bullet point here is knowing what ibadah is. Why? It's going to help us because we need to know what worship is, right? Because if we don't know what worship means in its entirety, at some point we're going to fall into shirk because we're going to end up doing something we're not aware of and it's actually worship and it's only for Allah's sake then, isn't it? We can only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we end up doing something wrong. So uh, we're, going to, we're going to learn what the realities and the facts of shirk are and we're also going to learn what worship is. What does it mean? What does it entail? What are the different types of worship? So that we know that all that is only for Allah Jalla wa Ala and that we don't get confused and don't fall into shirk, inshallah. So in, what we'll do is we'll wrap up now uh, here. And obviously Ramadan, alhamdulillah, starts next week. So um, we'll probably, best thing we'll do is take a break from this book so we can all focus on Ramadan. And after Eid, inshallah, we will uh, meet again. Uh, ta'ala, and we'll continue and finish this book as we've been doing over the last year and a half or so. We'll continue with the books that we've been doing and we'll finish off the way we've been doing. So, inshallah, we'll wrap up there and uh, we'll uh, meet again after Ramadan. Ta'ala. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ilan astaghfiruka wa tabu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.